All right, let's bring in Aditi Kinkabwala. Here she and is. And as always, us. when we have guests joining us, it is now brought to you by the Gridiron Guys. Are you we'll looking get to for their a vocal? You can trust the family old since 2003. The Gridiron <laughs> Guys have grown to become Northeast Ohio's top rated roofers. We exemplify quality work practices and are a valued resource for homeowners and nice. offer a 10 year warranty. Call 330 573 7967 today for a free estimate or roof inspection. What's up, Aditi? Uh, good morning. But what what does a foot in a walking boot have to do with eating hot dogs? Well, I was saying that if you have a foot, who cares? If you have a foot, in a, it can't be a sport if you can play it. If you can play it with your foot in a walking boot. But who said it's a sport? It's just a disgusting exercise. Well, I don't like it's well, gross. Don't I don't know that gross? we need to go as far to say it's disgusting. I mean, that sounds very <laughs> judgmental. <laughs> I actually saw a great quote from Ted Lasso. Adam, did you did you retweet that actually? Uh, the, the one Ted with Lasso him playing a darts. Yes, where he I says, tweeted that, "Don't yes. be judgmental." Right? Yes. We need less of that in life. Okay. Anyway, since we're talking about Twitter, yeah. And Mike Cole, please tell your dad I'm really disappointed he doesn't follow me. I'm telling you, he doesn't know how to look people up. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, knows how to look Jay Crawford up. Oh yeah, probably. And he found you. Yeah, Jay Crawford probably like wished him a happy birthday or something <laughs> at some point. I know he did. That is that is a thing Jay would do. One hundred percent. Yeah. I'm a little bit more concerned about Mike's mom though. Mike, does your mom have Twitter? No, no my mom. My mom is not on any well she might be on Facebook now but even that she has to like my dad has to log on to it for her for her and stuff like that to get are, her are we sure she's not YouTube commenting on these segments right now <laughs> she, yeah, she's not, I don't think she knows that I do this we have her and my dad and she and my dad are very different people my dad follows he's watching right now he's hearing my every word I love yeah. him for that and everything but my mom could not be less interested in this sort of thing and that's why I respect her yeah, and I respect you too dad but for different reasons different, yeah, yeah. By the way, Aditi, uh, speaking of our sponsor, Gridiron Guys, there was a movie with The Rock called Gridiron Gang. Did you ever Great see that movie. movie? I didn't see it, but I know exactly what you're talking oh about. Oh, my God. What is your favorite football movie of all time, by the way? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's so Think hard. about it. Anybody have their favorite? We like Red Iron Gang. Gang. I love that movie. I think mine's still got to go be the um, uh, uh, the original Mean Mach Machine. What was that? Um, the Longest Yard. Longest Yard. Red the original Red Longest Yard, Burt Reynolds' yeah, Longest Yard. Much better that's my than favorite. Remember the, yep. Remember the Titans. Remember, Remember the Titans is a great one. I can't do Remember it. the Titans is a great one. Although the that problem with Remember the Titans is, is I read an article about it and it wasn't that realistic, apparently. Well, then it's worthless. But uh, it was a great movie because yeah. Denzel's the best. Sure. Uh, I, I could, wait, I could. why not realistic? I actually went to school. I have a friend, Michael Sharp, who is from that town, who knew that coach, who knew Herman Boone. Why was it not realistic? Uh, in the article, there were people claiming that Herman Boone was really a horrible person. Uh, to both black people and white people. Really? It wasn't like a race, racial thing. I can't believe they softened that for the sake of Hollywood. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's, That's so movie. weird. Of course, that happens. G, what's your favorite football movie? Uh, I, I, I'm no. I'm gonna tell you my worst one. Okay, what good. One. What's the one? Um, what's the one with the Sandra replacements? Bull Sa Any Sa given Sunday. Sandra Bullock. Oh, blind, blind side. side. Oh, oh, hey, listen, oh, yeah. hold on. I that, like the blind side, bro. Let's <laughs> that was that. supposed to be fake. I heard that, he wasn't. Yeah. Ain't that's like this is crazy. That's like me walking up to a Didi and be like, yo. Take you me home. You, you trying to you trying to adopt me? <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, Big Mike. You know we're not about to do that. I'm walking around grown. Your mm. husband looking in the house like this guy's in our refrigerator. He doesn't fit in the bed. <laughs> like come on, you were on like these. I'm like you. But just, Daddy, would you like to adopt G? Would you? He's uh, up for adoption, I'm not so sure. G, G and I don't align on parenting things. No, nah, I feel like I, if I adopted she got all him, kind he'd be really upset with my little brother and little sister. <laughs> G, the other day I let my daughter eat something in the shopping cart while we were shopping. And I thought of Good you. Move. And I was like, oh, if you were here, you would have been really upset. But oh well. Yeah. I oh, so you, the you, shopping so you're the mom that lets people. You're, so how much. So if you're in the, you're in the checkout line. Yeah. They're eating the grapes. They, what, what, you it wasn't them? the grapes, though. It wasn't grapes. It was a box of cereal. So the box of cereal is going to cost it's the, the same box price. Of cereal Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You had her. You had her digging in a box of cereal. Mm -hmm. She's the only one that eats it. Her hands are clean. Oh, mm. This she is a hungry. whole. The poor kid was hungry. I took her straight from one spot to another. I brought her a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. She ate it, and then she was still a little. I hungry. got no problem. A lot of rationalizations going on right you. now, everybody. You got a problem with that? I mean, I'd have got whooped. Yeah. <laughs>
Don't you get don't you get in there and don't you touch nothing, boy. <laughs> don't ask for nothing. We don't care if you hungry or not. G, don't, get, don't get the grapes. <laughs> but, <laughs> speaking as a, speaking though as like a single person who grocery shops alone all the yeah. time, if that made uh, your child in the cart be quiet, I'm all for you fill, filling your child with cereal exactly. or whatever you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. I'm more concerned. Make your child happy and content and quiet while uh, the rest of us grown up. Mike, Mike on the other side. Yeah, and you, I felt that that was a piece of civic responsibility. Else. Yeah, right. Hey, sorry, G, Brad. I'm sorry, Adib. G, yeah. I tell you, Adib, you know, for, for G and I, you know, the parents, the parenting is a little different. You yeah. get in the car, you start acting crazy. They give you the yeah. look. Oh yeah. The look is like. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. we, let's get to some football here, please. I really want to get to the bottom of this cereal right thing. Now. All right. But before we do that, uh, I once ate an entire pound of ham at the supermarket and never paid for it. Hey. And that was as an adult, not as a child. Take that, Piggly Wiggly. I, I stole from, uh, I don't know. I don't know what supermarket it was. It wasn't in Cleveland. No shout out. I thought you'd get serious. <laughs> no, but, but, but let's get serious now. Um, Deshaun Watson still in the news. Who oh, God. <laughs> Doesn't that say it all right there? Right? It's My like. The back of Mike's head. No, no, no. You know what? Let's 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 skip Deshaun Watson. I'm making an executive decision. Here. I mean, no, we can talk about no, it, Adam. No, if you want I don't want to talk. If about anyone it. has something I'm, new, I'm listening. No, right. that's it. We got right. nothing we new. Got, we Here, have, better we have question. all the facts. Better question. We just had a, a quick conversation about a potential breakout candidate for the Browns in training camp. Let's go with that instead. We're also exasperated with the Watson situation. We talked about it already. Are Let's you exasperated? On. I thought that Mikey McNuggets told us it was great for ratings, that people it, just can't it get is, enough. It is, but, uh, you know, we don't do things just for the ratings. We don't do things just for clicks. We do things because uh, they're entertaining. So let's, enter so let's entertain everybody. Well, have talking we about talked a breakout about candidate the in camp. Oh, okay. What's breakout that? candidate in camp. I'm yeah. going to say the same one that I said a few months ago because it's the one that Kevin Stefanski told me, Harrison Bryant. Hmm. I'm pumped about seeing Harrison Bryant and what he can do, what sort of security blanket he can be. And this is a division that has some really good tight ends. So let's see. I love the line, I'm pumped about seeing Harrison Bryant. And I wonder if it's ever been uttered aloud before. <laughs> I'm, I hope you're right. I like, he was, you know, there's a reason that he kept him around. He had some good numbers last year. He looked good. I, I'm, I don't know. I'm to me, him. he's an SWG. What's an SWG? A stiff white guy. Okay. <laughs> oh. So he considers mm. him. I make everything about race. So. Yeah, yes. I, Didi, I'll give you a real question. Yeah. Um, real okay. question. Here. Let's get here. Oh, that wasn't a real question? That wasn't. That was a fake question. So w w Mike brought up something when we were talking to Mary Kay. She, he says, you know, God forbid Amari Cooper goes down in training camp with something nagging. To, to me, That'd be disastrous because I have no faith in. Can you imagine on third down you you you're looking for Anthony Schwartz to go over the middle and catch mm -hmm. the ball? I don't know what what, what David Bell is and and uh, Donovan Peoples Jones was Donovan Peoples Jones mm -hmm. is a five star recruit like 12 years ago in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, are do they need or are you comfortable with the the guys that they have behind Amari Cooper in the event? Amari Cooper, it, it goes down. I don't have that too much. I, I think, you know what, G, I think this is what the difficulty is, right? All we've seen so far is football in shorts. And what can you really tell Nothing. in football in shorts? <laughs> Nobody's in pads. You can't see who can make a tough catch over the middle. I haven't been able to see the way that Anthony Schwartz has grown. I expect him to grow. Year one to year two, you should be taking a really big jump of some kind. You know, some guys come in. Jamar Chase comes in and you expect Jamar Chase to be a superstar. But you know what? Antonio Brown came in and wasn't a superstar right away. He turned into a superstar. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fair to say, let's see what these guys actually have to offer during camp. I think that there's been a lot of unrest right now. You sort of, you know, you don't know who your quarterback is. You don't know what offense you're running. You don't know if Jacoby Brissett is the guy delivering the ball or Deshaun Watson is. It's all different from Baker Mayfield a year ago. So Give me two weeks into camp and then let me answer how comfortable I feel. But in theory, on paper, sure, you'd love to see that room bulked up a little bit. You'd like to see a little yeah. bit more in the wide receiver core. But then I ask you this, who? Who's out How about there? Will Fuller? Who are you getting? Aditi, Will Fuller played with Deshaun Watson. I know he's got, had a lot of injuries, so you're not going to pay him a ton of money. But the guy, whenever he's been on the field, and again, it's not been that much because he's missed a ton of time due to injury. But when he has played, he has played at a very high level. If you could get him at a minimum salary, $2 million, $3 million, with a ton of incentives, there's a ton of upside with that guy. And he's got the chemistry already with Watson because he spent most of his career with him. I, I don't, I'm surprised that the Browns haven't gone in that direction.
What do you think? Well, I mean, we don't know that they haven't kicked the tires on that just True. yet. We also don't yeah. know what Will Fuller is asking for, right? It's easy for you and me to sit here and say, why don't you just sign for the veteran minimum? The same way that a week ago I was saying, why doesn't Baker just take the pay cut and prove he, who he is? It's easy for us right. to talk about somebody else's money or somebody else's True. salary. But I think we also had this conversation last week. You're a veteran. You've worked really hard to earn a certain amount of money. And it mm -hmm. may take a period of time before you're willing to sit back and say, okay, you know what? I'll play for less than what I think my worth is. It's, you know, one of your favorite sons in Cleveland, Joe Hayden. That's the situation he's in right now. I yeah, think Joe Casey Hayden's Treader still has probably too. Him. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and I respect that. You work really hard to get to mm -hmm. a certain amount of money to get to a certain salary, to get to a certain pay scale. It's hard to stomach the idea that you're worth less than that and you want to hold out to see if you can get that. And as we all know, you know, these veterans don't need to go through the dog days of training camp. Things can happen. Things do happen in training camp. People get hurt. Teams get more needy. And so then the market is a little bit better for you. Aditi, I'm going to ask the first real question I've asked on about seven and a half weeks of this show. Wow. But you're talking about wide receivers. Is there depth? within the Cleveland Browns receivers room. We also cover the Steelers, and they develop these all-pro receivers on a year-by-year -year basis. They never have a lack of talent in that room. Is there something in particular Pittsburgh does to develop these receivers that other teams around the NFL just aren't? Or can you kind of see the growth from Cleveland and what they have in this room as you kind of project that position group moving forward? You know, Mikey, Thank it's you. so Good funny question. because I was I actually tried to pin Kevin Colbert down on this because I think that Kevin Colbert, who was the longtime general manager in Pittsburgh, he obviously just retired, was terrible at drafting cornerbacks, but tremendous at drafting wide receivers. As you know, Antonio Brown was a six round pick. Mike Wallace, Emmanuel Sanders, guys, you know, like he got a lot of guys, Martavis Bryant, later in drafts that turned into stars. And he kept saying if you've got a Hall of Fame quarterback, mm -hmm. he can make the wide receivers look good. And I think there is some truth to that, is that Ben Roethlisberger is indeed a talent that is not the ordinary, regular talent. So let's see what these young wide receivers do now moving forward. I think that receiver is an easier position to transition into in the NFL. I think that that's part of why we see kind of what's happening in the wide receiver market right now and the way that you're seeing veteran wide receivers perhaps being moved to other teams before big contracts and rookies coming in and having an immediate impact. Again, I think a lot of it, you know, a wide receiver can only do so much by himself. He needs the ball delivered to him. He needs a line that gives his quarterback time to deliver him the ball. He needs an offense that can scheme up ways to set him free if he is a guy that still draws double or triple teams. I think there is potential in that wide receiver room, and I don't think that the Browns would have spent as much as they would have on the quarterback position if they weren't going to give him anybody to throw to. Didi, I, so, and, I, and I agree with you ahead. because your point about uh, Jamar Chase down in Cincinnati, I think he, he being aligned with with uh, uh, Joe, Burrow. Joe Burrow down at LSU paid dividends for them. So right. his, his learning curve was, was not there. So I think the Browns are banking on the fact that Deshaun Watson is going to be under him. He's going to make the players better. But I'm going to get back to where I wanted to be from the beginning. <laughs> How nervous are oh, the Browns no. about this thing going south on them with, with Watson could be out an extended period of time? How, how nervous is really? I know it's people say on the surface, but how nervous are they really about this going south? You know, I, it, it is hard to believe, and we talked about this again, Adam, you asked this last week. It is very hard to believe that the Browns didn't try to discern how bad this could be. And by bad, I mean how, how long they would be without him. The thing that strikes me is so incredibly notable from everything we've heard of the hearing last week is that the NFL never entered into any sort of evidence the idea of force or coercion. And so we know that the NFL can do what the NFL wants to do. We know that whatever decision the federal judge hands down can then, of course, be appealed to the commissioner. We know that if the NFL's lawyers are advising the commissioner to seek an indefinite suspension, then the commissioner can hear that and can ultimately impose what he wants to. But you sort of you worry about that. If there's no evidence of force, if there's no evidence of coercion, 
then how can you ask for an indefinite suspension? Right. And sure. I think that that is what the Browns are sort of banking on, that at the end of the day, the optics of this whole situation are really just very sad, very uncomfortable. They're just not good. I don't know how else to phrase it, okay? It's ugly. It's an ugly situation. But at the end of the day, there's a big difference between whether there is indeed force and coercion or there isn't. And one can always argue that there is implied coercion, there is implied force, there is implied fear. But the NFL never brought that up last week. So again, none of us were in that room. We don't know what the entire case is. We won't be in the decision-making room. I think it's very interesting that Sue Robinson has asked for briefs as well. This is clearly going to be dragged out further as those briefs aren't due for another week still. So, and that, yeah, there you go. Yes, I, I think that the briefs are a normal part of any arbitration. Yeah. They, they were going to come. That's it. I, what I think is what, how long she takes to, to handle them because it could yeah. be. It, it's, it's not going to be three or four days. I'm going to tell you that now. No, but that tweet from Florio there, and we've I've had my beef with Florio over the time, but that tweet, if he's right, and we don't like his source may be, it, it's probably a player association source. Or no, I, I've had that verified. I've had somebody tell me that that's Okay, so that's out. true. So, okay, so so Mary, so, so Aditi's saying, uh, Mary Kay was, speak, was, was saying like, hey, it's kind of going in a positive way. Aditi's saying now that uh, she can back up what Florio said here from her sources. If that's true to me, when I read that, Aditi, as you brought up, that that was, I felt like that was a game changer. Now, I, I was, I've been saying eight games all along. I never bought the whole season. But now, I, as you just said, how do you suspend the guy for a whole season when he didn't force, coerce, or threaten? I, I don't understand. Like, if even if there's implied coercion, and he did, you know, and, and even his lawyer has admitted he's broken, you know, NFL rules about conduct. So you give him a, whatever it is, four to six games, maybe eight at the most, and then move it along. I, I just don't see how it could be any longer than that. The one thing, though, I do want to say, Adam, is that we don't want to diminish implied coercion. Because certainly you can be in a position, whether it is a superior, whether it is somebody that is bigger than you, whether it is somebody who holds the power of, of your employment in their hands. It doesn't necessarily have to be a physical or violent threat to feel True. coerced, to Good feel point. forced. So let's yes. not diminish that. I'm just Fair. saying the fact that not even that was brought up feels a little bit significant right. to me because yeah. coercion does take different different shapes and again i i wish that i can i wish i could just write it off as a black or white thing but we keep sitting here and saying this it, there's this is so gray it's this is so gray in so many mm -hmm. ways and the nfl is not following or is not required to follow it's its own world it's its own space and so the right. nfl can essentially meet out whatever punishment it wants i think that the browns from the beginning have be believed that there's a certain sort of logic to this and how it goes but I, it's not necessarily the way that things work so i guess again it is still wait and see and you'd like to believe that there is indeed a decision before training camp begins Aditi, let's go with the worst case scenario for i, I think the public best case scenario for the cleveland browns and deshaun watson if he gets, if, if she comes back and she says zero games based on the evidence and then based on how they handled other cases, what do you think the backlash is? What is, what is, what, 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 what is the public sentiment if he gets zero games? I think it's divided because that's what we are as a country. I think that everybody looks at, a specific situation differently. I mean, look, I, I I don't know how we kind of got into this piece of it, but you see what happened in Illinois yesterday so tragically, and you have a gubernatorial candidate viewing that and saying, okay, let's move on. You know, some people will look at that and say, okay, Deshaun Watson is vindicated. Okay, this was, you know, some women looking or some lawyer looking to do something. And then you'll see a whole other group of people say, Yet again, it's women not being listened to, or it's women not being taken seriously. I, it, there's no pat answer no, to that. No, Can not. you see how like this is making yeah, me it's so hard? It's hard. Aditi, you, you know you're... What? It's, just, it's, it's 
it's just it's uncomfortable for everyone. There's yeah. just not a clean answer. And I think so much of it is because we don't have all the facts. And I hate the idea of sitting here and speaking with authority yeah. without ever knowing the full story. The, and I don't know that we ever will know the full and story. Media, I agree with you. I, I don't think we're ever going to know the full story. And I will tell you this. And I appreciate your, your, your viewpoint on it because you're giving us the, the a woman's perspective on how it goes. Let me be clear. Deshaun Watson is never going to get vindicated because even if he clears it, it's, going right. to, it's always going right. to hang over his head, yeah. right? And I think the worst thing that could have happened to him and the NFL and the Browns was the fact that the because your implied coercion case was it was not made by the prosecutors in Texas. Once they couldn't make that case, because if they had it, they would have made it. Because all they had to do right. was get a preponderance of evidence to just get him in court. They couldn't even get him in court, right? So now they're stuck. And they're caught in this little gray matter world between both worlds, and now it has to play itself out. And be, be clear, what I read between the lines, or floor, the NFL is looking for an off ramp. Everybody's mm -hmm. looking for an off ramp here, and I don't <sighs> think that it's coming because whatever ramp you choose, there's going to be somebody waiting at the end of it talking about you. Went, right. You got off the wrong exit. You're 100 percent right, Brad. But I, I and I think at the end though. The sooner it's decided, the better, because eventually everybody moves on, just like they do from every other story. Yeah, it'll hang over him. You're right; he's never going to clear his name. But Aditi, like, even if he, what you're right, we're going to be split, right? If it's, if, it's, if it's perceived as too little, then the people that are angry that these women are being not listened to or whatever, those people are going to be angry. If it's considered too strong, then the people who think. It's a racial element with Watson, or they're mad because they're a brown. Know, racial. It might just be. Are you legislating morality here? Right, right, right. Like, are that you, too. You know, that too. Are, are, are you getting worried about promiscuity? I don't. Or, I don't or, know what it is. I'm just saying right. it's something. No, you're right. I, you weren't saying racial. I was saying whether it's racial, whether it's morality, whether it's I'm just a Browns fan, so I don't want to get suspended, so I'm gonna ignore everything he did. Whatever it is, there's gonna be some people angry, but those people are not gonna stop watching football. It's not going to affect TV ratings. Ultimately, however this turns out, football, will, I believe, will not be negatively affected at all. Do you? No, and I and right. I think that that's part of it is that, you know, we love to sit here and say we want our sports icons to be, you know, infallible. We want them to be on a pedestal. We want them to be pure and clean in every way. Well, you know, what human is? And so I think sometimes you just don't want to know as much about it. And it can be light or it can be really heavy like this. I'll just, Brad, I'll tell the story. Last night I was at dinner with people and we were talking about people that you admire from afar and then you meet them in person and it either greatly makes you feel good about who you loved or it disappoints you in some way. Yeah. And so when I was a little girl, I loved the New York Knicks and Charles Oakley was my absolute favorite player. And Charles Oakley was an enforcer and Charles Oakley threw his body everywhere. And Charles Oakley pulled down every rebound. And Brad, I met Charles Oakley and he had this high pitched voice. That <laughs> <laughs> who I thought was. And I remember going home so disappointed. Like, wait a minute, that's Charles so, Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's silly, but it's when you don't know somebody, right. you want them to be a certain thing. You create an image of them. But again, what human is perfect? What human lives his or her life exactly as you want him to live or her life, live his or her life. Yeah. I, I just think that that's sort of when we get into this, you know, are you disappointed? Are you upset? Are you whatever? And we just have to leave it to the rules of the game, whatever the game is. Aditi, the one thing that I do, I disagree with Adam on here is that I do think that we've, this isn't going to uh, go away for some people in a way that other things have not right. stuck. I think that there, there's a, they've lost a portion of this fan base because of this move, because of the, what a lot of people consider to be the pretty heinous stuff that uh, Deshaun Watson uh, allegedly did, that uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing some of these people back. And that was a decision the Browns made going into this when they made this. Mike, when they until made this they win. Until they win. What I will mm -hmm. say is until they win. I do so you think that there, everyone, truth, every, you think, you, know, you don't think anyone's being sincere about this. You don't think there, any women are being sincere, female Browns fans are being sincere about this. If the Browns start winning, all of a sudden they'll be like, okay, he wasn't such a creep anyways. I like the I'm, Browns. I'm not saying everybody. I'm not saying 100% of the fan base by any means. I mean, and, I, I know several female Browns fans that are really sort of having a day of reckoning over this. But I can also tell you that people said something very, very similar about Ben Roethlisberger after sure the incidents in Milledgeville, Georgia and out in Nevada. And 
Right. There were lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of women wearing Ben Roethlisberger jerseys and lots of women crying on his last home game this past year. So, I mean, the guy then, he won two Super Bowls. And I think that, and I don't say that disrespectfully when I say it that way, but, you know, you're right that some people can't ever shake it. Mike Vick. Mike Vick, to me, is an example of a guy who's always been a great teammate, who's always been well-liked, one of the most dynamic athletes our generation has ever seen, who committed some heinous acts and served time for it. Served yeah. time, went to yep. jail. The country decided that he had re, or not the country, whatever, it was decided that he had rehabilitated himself enough such that he could have a pet dog. Mm-hmm. He was signed by the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Steelers were absolutely eviscerated. Mm-hmm. And the hate on talk radio forever for Mike Vick while he was here in this town, people were unwilling to forgive and right. move on. So it so, is a possibility, Mike. I'm not yeah. saying it's not, but I'm also saying there's the flip side to that and that, you know, Ben Roethlisberger was ultimately forgiven. Yep. Greg Hardy re-signed, right. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Nobody was, these are things that happen. When, when little Benny was playing his last uh, NFL game, as you mentioned, they were lauding him on TV. There was no talking about, there was no talk about how bad a human being he was. So, or how badly I mean, he played that game. When we talk about legislating morality, how shocked were people when out it came what Tiger Woods' private life was sure. and yeah. how faithful he was or was not to his wife. And now look at all of that. Who even mm-hmm. brings that up now? What? Now I he's in here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. And that's it. I... Tiger had one more shot in him. Right. You know? Right. We all yeah. worship sure. Kobe now, too. Exact same thing. Same. Yep. And we will all, yeah, there will be some people that Mike says, you're right, there's going to be a percentage, but ultimately, it's always like, oh, it's a bad look for the league, bad look for the league. It really, it, it is, but it doesn't really affect them in reality. All right, let's get to our top five. Aditi in the mix for the top five as well. Mikey McNuggets, what do we got for today's top five? Today's top five is the best mind-numbingly stupid but good TV shows of all time. Just the best ways to pass time when you're stuck on a couch. And as always, the Ultimate Five is sponsored by Roundstone oh, Insurance. Great insurance. Roundstone offers a better alternative for affordable quality health care. For the more best. than a decade, Roundstone Insurance has been saving small and mid-sized businesses money up mm-hmm. to 20%. Yeah, 20%. Contact Convenient us today website. to learn how you can get great health care benefits that your employees will love and save money too. So without further ado, let's get into this aditi real quick before we start do you have a favorite just mind numbingly you know pass the time if you see it on you can pass 45 minutes by watching it hgtv oh yeah <laughs> good answer did not make my list that's a good answer I, Didi, I was on that yesterday i was on that yesterday <laughs> yes i was Mark, I, I love makeovers i love the before and afters mm. I was making my two and a half year old watch with me yesterday, and she goes, "Oh, so pretty!" And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's a girl uh, after my own." That's, 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 that's <laughs> get that's you nice. some love it or list it. I like a little house hunters, <laughs> practical jokes. Oh, house Go ahead. I don't like G-Bush. house hunters. That one's fake. Mm-hmm. I like love it or list it. Or I saw a new one yesterday, Farmhouse Fixer. Oh yeah, Farmhouse Fixer. Yeah. A former new kid on the block. Yeah. I think that, that new so house hunters is fake. They're, I know the whole thing is a setup, but they actually buy those houses, don't they? I guess. I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. I had an You're... audio guy in Pittsburgh who worked on. Don't shake bull like decide. this. Don't tell him <laughs> oh. it's not real. <laughs> I know reality shows well, are not I like real. The I like the before and the yeah. after. No yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The All right, Mike. Let's get our list here. What All right. There's a little before and after in my first choice. Number five, naked and afraid. They changed so much in 21 days. The survival list. G. Bush, you look like you've never seen this show. No, I have. I've they never get dropped in the middle of the Amazon. Naked they gotta survive afraid? for three weeks with no supplies. It's I don't a survival know what that show. Is. Oh, I don't know. What that I don't want to see anybody naked. I know what porn. it is. I mean, but <laughs> it's nothing I care to indulge in. <laughs> no. it's, Mikey, I don't know where you'd be pulling these from, but keep going. That's man. our Discovery <laughs> Channel. Yeah, 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 it's a very normal You're not watching Naked and Afraid, are you? I don't know what that is. I have no, no idea. It's Nobody. a survival show. They get dropped off in the middle of the Amazon. All, they got to survive three weeks. All I know is weeks. Discovery Channel you have to pay for on streaming. So Mikey's paying Mikey, for the side got too much time on <laughs> I heard of it. They asked me to be on it, but uh, uh-huh. but they were too afraid. For certain reasons, I didn't want, I didn't want to show anybody up, so I had right, to stay right. off the show. Uh-huh. Go ahead. All right, well, hopefully you guys have heard some of the next ones. Uh, let's go to number four. My man John Taffer, Bar Rescue. I'm not watching the show. I this. love it. This guy's a tool. You know, you know what? You know what, guy? Listen, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going in. I can't take it anymore. He's the higher vo- pitch voice of Bull. He wow. Yes. Yes. Is he not? Yes. 
John Taffer. Shout wow. out to him. I man. saw him. I watched it once and saw him like screaming at this woman, and I'm like, yep. "What is he doing? Yeah, your place is a dump. I You're only failing. See kids and Just- <laughs> What's the matter with you?" Yeah, just somebody yelling at some bu- some restaurant owner about how terrible their place is yeah. for a while, and then you know turning uh, around. But love it. It. <laughs> yeah, but it's you know, I will HGTV, say this: Have you guys but for seen bars. the Prophet? Wait, have you seen the Prophet? Mm-mm, is never that what heard it's of called? it. What, like Mark Malusa? What's his name? He like goes in and he saves failing businesses. Mark Malusa is a talk show host in New York. All right, not that one. I'm gonna find. I watched his name, an interesting, interesting like thing quote. though about uh, like, after no. they do those saving the business things, yeah. they went back like a year later and, and, and like almost almost all of those places have closed. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, but we put in Marcus a pinball Malonis. machine. Marcus we Malonis. thought this would work. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't always work. Most mm-hmm. of the time, it doesn't. All right, all right. Well, number, all three. Right. number three. Number three. Number three. Let's add a little competition to the mix. Ink Master. So these are all reality shows. Watching people. Are you watching all these shows? Are they all reality shows? No, that these you are shows that like if they're on and I need to kill an hour, I can sit on the couch and enjoy it for an hour. But you exclusively I watch mean, reality programming. Just no, rewatch well, a few Good Men or remember the Titans. No, I, but I can't start a movie it, and not finish it. You know, I'm very dedicated. Yeah, but to what about episodes. like Law and Order or yeah, uh, don't like Law and Order too serious. Like Impractical <laughs> Jokers, not funny. What? And Practical Jokers is so hit or miss. Yeah. It is hit or miss. I'll give you that. But you can't say it's not funny. It's sometimes not funny. But it's more hit than miss. See, Although it's not good anymore because Joe's not on the show My anymore. only complaint, not about that. I don't yeah. care about that. My only complaint <laughs> is that we need to start changing this ultimate five, uh, like this phrase right here. That font has to say best uh, mind-numbing TV shows for Mikey McNuggets. Right, yeah, this right. makes it look like it represents all of us <laughs> yeah, for we don't humanity. Like any of these shows. And then you just come out of nowhere with just personal stuff. You've got to put a little logo of your face on it or something. <laughs> I don't want to be associated with your shows. <laughs> what if somebody funny. just looks at the screen That's grab Point. And it says ultimate best mind numbing TV shows, and it says naked and afraid. And he's like, Oh, Polk really likes naked and afraid. I don't want to be represented yeah, by we're you. We're lumped in with you naked and afraid. And I'm lumped in with all point. your takes, so it goes both That's ways, true. guys. But we have good takes, though. Yeah. And this well, is a great list. All. all right, number two. Go ahead. Shark Tank. This one actually is a good TV show. It's mind numbing, but intelligent. I've and never watched it. Watch You've Shark never watched what do you guys do? I want, we, we don't listen. I, I, I don't know what you're doing. Shark, <laughs> shark, shark, shark Tank is it's okay. It, it's decent. Um, it all depends. I, I don't like when they, there's obviously a good deal. They just have to turn it down because their boys like it. Ah, my boy, he wants it. I, I don't want it. Sometimes they just turn so, down. So just my, for sake of it. my, when I say when they say mind numbing shows, it's one that I'm going to binge watch like off the hook. Like mm-hmm. I could tell you bull. I would yes. watch. I would watch. Um, Walking um, Dead. Walking Dead, like it's nobody's business. I can mm-hmm. watch it from the beginning of the day Agreed. to the end, right? Agreed. Mm-hmm. But I think Mike's do, doing shows that, like, you could not pay, like, kind of have on, These but not pay attention These are shows that you to. could, like, it's perfect to have on in the background. You tune in for a few seconds. You check mm-hmm. your phone. You tune I, out. You I wouldn't watch back. a show. You can't, I wouldn't watch a show like that. Either I'm going to watch it or I'm not going to watch it. But it's not important, right. Aditi. That's why it's perfectly mind-numbing. That's not mind-numbing. Maybe we have to <laughs> clarify the mind-numbing. All right, let's just get to number one. You guys hate my let's list move already. move on. Mm-hmm. It's a terrible list. I might get chopped for this one, but Chopped is the best Thank show you. on TV I'll, to watch. I'll, I'll you give just you need that. to kill an hour. I'll give you that. I don't watch Chop, that. Chopped, chopped is one of the best shows. You can have it in the background. They're relatively quick. You can jump in and jump out. You know somebody's going to get eliminated. That you know they have to do three or four dishes, and it's pretty cool. I like Chop. Another thing it should say, it should specify reality shows in, yeah, your, I know. in this thing. The only reality show I ever watched was A Shot at Love with Tila Tequila, and honestly, that's just because she was hooking up with guys and girls, and I found that <laughs> fascinating. You know that was a I farce, too? You, then she became a racist and like a uh, anti-Semite, and so I, you know, we couldn't watch it anymore. But all of these yeah, admissions, yeah, that, it, <laughs> it, it, yeah, Tila Tequila, that was she like she was off the. She's she nuts. was, she was not actually. We got, we're gonna, gonna have to view oh, his. Thing. It was no, it was yeah. just a, for, right, the only reason we're watching. We're, we're gonna watch, we have to view his list. Aditi, Sorry, we don't know. Aditi, Aditi, we don't know where this went off the rails. But what's your mind-numbing show that you watch, uh, like to have on in the Law and Order? Is it Law and Order? It used to be Law and Order. Maybe Blue Bloods now. Okay. Oh, that's on in the background a lot. Uh, if we're talking about regular TV, if you're not like on Netflix yes. and doing, you know, Drive to Survive or yep. calling up The Sopranos or something like that. But if it's just like what's on TV, mm-hmm. Blue Bloods is constantly on on like six okay. channels. By the so, way, final, final thought on this. The Law and Order Criminal Intent with Vincent D'Onofrio was the best Law and Order outlet, in my opinion. Oh, I was an SVU person. Yeah, SVU. I like SVU. I, I've SVU. heard Mariska Hargitay is a terrible human being. I've heard that from multiple sources. 
Yeah. Really? Okay. <laughs> she, she's a bad tipper. You can, I, you, I know three we, different people that have waited on her in New York and said she's a rude and yeah. terrible tipper. You're still going to watch the Browns even no matter what happens with Watson. I don't you care. can watch else, you can watch uh, this one. Fair point. I Thank you. You know what? I stopped watching the Cosby shows, though. I will say that. Do you still watch the Cosby show? No. Uh, I mean, it's so I, dated, that show, to, anyway. Way. No, I don't watch it, but I still say this. I think it served its purpose at the time. I don't think what it, what like, I think it helped at the time. Yes. And I don't think that takes anything away from it. You just don't watch it now, but right. it did now a lot of good at the time. Yes, now, Dee Dee, I will say this. I stopped listening to all of R. Kelly's music. All yeah, of it. So, me too. You did. Right. Fin- finito. Me too. What you about Michael Jackson? Exist. What about Michael yeah, what Jackson? What about Michael Jackson? Good point. Hey guys, hold on, hold on. Steve, take it. We have real breaking news. You got us out of good. Got us out of good situation there. We love you. Adidas, thank you. But real quick, this is actually serious. Really? This from Dennis Dodd of CBS. The Big 12 in deep discussions to add six Pac-12 teams mm-hmm. after USC and yeah, UCLA. Right. Yeah. Defected to the Big Ten, the Pac-12. Does that make it the Big Literally 18 dead. in the? So uh, let me let me jump I mean, in here. Does anybody care though? This, this, no, this is yeah. here. This is where, where my final takes on t- yeah. touch on this. But I'm gonna just tell you this: this yeah. is where this is going. Good. This is exactly where it's going because those Pac-10, Pac-10, Pac-12 schools, yeah. the ones that are remaining, had to go somewhere. Yeah. Right. And so, well, why would they go to the Big 12? The Big 12 is gonna be done. They got nobody. Because they have to combine now. There's mm-hmm. only there's only. Two All right, now we're down to four to conferences. By the way, in my what, ha- what happens? Ahead, what happens to all those non-revenue sports? What happens to women? Well, they'll time? make these schools are going to make still make a ton of money. The country fly commercial on a Tuesday and then be in class on so, Wednesday. So, Good so, point. So, so Didi, I will tell you, like everybody's but, a hypocrite. So I'm a Big before. Ten guy. The Big Ten is probably going to has a chance to make 110 million dollars a school, right? It's going it's per going, year. It's, it's per year. It's going it's going to now prop up the other sports where that was coming out of the general revenue fund from basically Ohio State football mm-hmm. and just a little bit of Ohio State basketball. Yeah, the money deal is what what is driving this right and, and it's all here. I will say it, it is all the NCAA's fault. They did not cut the deal with the players from the beginning and now the, the, the bigger schools are now are yeah. really looking at the NCAA like, do I really even need you? No, exactly. And <laughs> right. we'll have more on this in his final take. Aditi, we thank you for your time. Love Thanks you. for having we'll me guys. Later. Thank See you, Aditi. Bye. Bye.